Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will summarize to you the last chapter of The Price of Tomorrow, A Call to Action. If you're interested to know the content, you need to keep on watching. According to Ray Dalio, there are only four levers governments can pull to escape debt crises. Debt restructuring, austerity, quantitative easing, and transfer of wealth from the rich to the poor. Austerity and debt restructuring are deflationary. They would create a vicious feedback cycle and a collapse in asset prices, combined with lower employment. However, the debt in the world is already so high that these two options are almost impossible to implement. Now, we are only left with either quantitative easing or transferring of wealth. In the short term, this approach can be successful because people feel richer. As we see in businesses that fail to transition to a new economic reality, it takes bold leadership to do what is needed for the long term, because the short term pain is too great. But as a byproduct of not taking bold action for the long term, the business is forced into bankruptcy later. I call this kick the can down the road strategy. A day will come, probably sooner than later, when we realize that the only thing driving our economies is the explosion of debt. If governments need to run huge deficits with extremely low interest rates for fear of growth failing, even in economies that are running at near full employment, imagine how the debt and deficits explode in a recession or depression when the economy falters. As we have seen throughout this book, this strategy has only one end game. First, higher inequality. Second, people losing hope in the system due to not being able to make ends meet. Third, more polarization. Fourth, a rise of leaders that use the polarization to create as versus them narratives to consolidate power, and finally, commonplace revolution and wars. This solution, in the end, is a dissolution. This solution requires wealth transfers, and because of that, they are deeply unpopular to many of those with wealth. It is hard to see the money that you believe that you have earned because of your ingenuity or hard work go to others who you deem not to have worked as hard. The argument from those who have wealth is that the higher the tax rate on the wealthy, the more disincentive there is to take risks, innovate, and be a strong contributor to society. One of the more prominent proposals in this camp is universal basic income. In policy circles around the world, it is getting serious airtime. The idea is simple in premise, raise taxes on the wealthy to give a minimum basic income whether people work or not, topping people up if they work to a maximum amount but also not requiring them to work for their wage. Universal basic income is essentially a version of wealth transfer. It incentivizes people to get paid for nothing. The most important problem with the solution is it does not deal with the root cause. Deflation caused by technology will ride the same exponential wave that technology does. That means that the rate of deflation, without printing more money, will only accelerate from here. Quantitative easing and wealth transfer aren't really considered as solutions. Because global debt is already so high and expanding quickly, a reset of debt is needed in any truly viable solution. That reset will likely be painful and could erase vast fortunes overnight while also creating new ones. Similar resets have happened in the past. There will be winners and losers depending on where bets are placed. Just as the game theory predicts, we care about our own needs first. Domestic issues always take precedence over international ones. If the US came up with a policy in the US dollar reserve currency that only benefited itself while hurting all others. Once trust is broken, other countries will encourage the growth of their own currencies. Since the US dollar became the primary currency of the world without a peg to gold, it gave the US tremendous influence in global affairs. This causes many countries to manipulate its currency for political gain while worsening a framework for fair trade. Bitcoin, and other cyber currencies, is an attempt at a solution. The promise of Bitcoin was to create a system that was decentralized in nature, unable to be manipulated by anyone including governments. In addition to that, it creates a peer-to-peer -peer ledger without any central control, the blockchain. An open distributed ledger that offers security and trust by verifying transactions with consensus instead of through a central authority. In Venezuela today, hyperinflation environment, Bitcoin is already acting as a life-saving currency for those who have it, as it is a much more secure payment medium than the local currency. As technology spreads, deflation happens at the rate it should. Deflation becomes something celebrated because it means that we are getting more for less. We allow ourselves to accept abundance. Along that continuum, as technology removes jobs and fewer overall jobs are needed, 
prices will keep falling, allowing those who lose jobs a way to share in the benefit of technology abundance without massive transfer of wealth. People will no longer have to be on an endless treadmill to pay for things that are constantly rising in price. As hard as that might be for us to accept, because it is such a radical change to the way things are today, it seems to me that it is the only real choice we have. It is easy to dismiss it out of hand, because we are trapped in a system where we don't know what we would do with ourselves if we didn't have jobs. The fear of a future without jobs and self-worth that they bring stops us from imagining a better world in which they might not even be required. The deflationary aspect of technology is too great a force and it will eventually overwhelm even the greatest efforts to stop it. Those efforts to stop it will look insane to future generations because that fight will bring on revolutions and wars that burn the existing system to the ground. Remember, a currency only holds value because of the deemed trust we have in it. Beyond that, it is just a piece of paper with faces and numbers on it. If the government breaks their promises, people will look for alternatives. The digital and distributed nature of Bitcoin allows it to benefit from a network effect with each additional user enhancing its value. As more users trust the system, more trust accretes to the system. It is clear that something must be done to our current system. There is a lack of real debate about the core issues and solutions, and there is an increasing likelihood of world conflict if we don't act. That lesson, our lives are defined by the positive impact we have on others. We are all driven by that love and when it shows up, that love is what we remember. That is what endures. How these people shaped us, impacted us, and made us better. It becomes our responsibility to take their gifts and pass them on. I encourage you to contribute to the conversion and debate so that we can together design a world that allows for the best in humanity to thrive as we move into an exciting future of abundance. I invite you to continue the conversation at www.theprikiooftomorrow.com. If you like to get a copy of this book, click on the link in the description below. Let me know your thoughts for The Price of Tomorrow and how it changes your view and perception towards the future. If you have other books to recommend and would like to make it into a video, please let me know in the comments section below.